In continuing our digital painting, remember you're posting your, your most dominant reference. I'm using these two. And then you're posting your finished digital painting. This is not finished. This is what we call a base painting layer. And I'm almost done with the base painting layer. Uh, what do I still need to do? I need to get rid of all the white in it from the background coming through. And obviously there's a lot I need to do in the tail. There's also little flecks of it throughout, right? So it's, it's like flat color, but this is just base painting. Obviously there's a lot more than just local color going on. And we're working on top of a sketched outline. And some artists don't even like to sketch with a line at all. They just like to go right to base painting. So let's open that up. Remember, a big part of digital painting is just setting up your workspace. And so I did the extra step of doing a screen grab of how it should be set up and to remind you of how you do that. So we're in Photoshop, we're just in the Essentials view. You can also go into like a digital painting view. But basically we have a color selector at the top. We have the layers here, which are going to become more and more important as we start to refine it. And then most importantly, we're going to be using the brush tool almost exclusively and having reference images open on the side here. Because when you hold down the Option key with the brush tool, it changes it to what's called the eyedropper tool, which is right there, which allows you to steal colors from anything open in Photoshop, including from yourself, right? I also made a little palette of, of colors on the side, but that can always be adjusted and added to. And notice that it's easily erased later, right? Easily selected and erased later. Okay, so let's set this up. I wish there was a way to to just save your Photoshop file so it already set it up with those multiple files open, but there isn't. So instead I start by opening up my main PSD file and then open up my main references. I'm actually gonna open up all of these, all these three, and then open those with Photoshop. They'll open up in tabs. I go back to my original which you can get from the drop-down menu here. Because that I want to be on the far left side. I can go ahead and make this bigger. I can even, I don't usually like doing this, but I can even do the full screen. And then I need to go to Window, Arrange, and I'm going to say 3 up stacked. And then I can move this one. I think I want to move it down here. You can kind of move them into the different areas. And then maybe move this one. These are the different colors of my fox, which now once I get kind of the shading done, or at least indicated in my, um, in my base painting from this resource, then I will be able, let's see, to use any colors I want to kind of finish it up. So three up stacked. And I'm still base painting, so I'm going to use this as my, my color one. If I want to match it exactly to what I had before, I can do that. I can move them between the two as long as I have always one of them filled. And so I can move my my palette there and then I can shrink this one with command minus so I can see the full scale of it. And we're off off to the races here. All right, so I'm going to use the brush tool. Remember we customize our brush. I'm using my Carl brush. If I zoom in on it, you can see that it's set under brush settings to have shape dynamics and some texture. So as it overlaps, you can see that. It's pretty subtle. I have it at 70%. All right. So I'm just going to stick with this and I'm going to finish up the tail. 
part of which is cropped off in my reference. So I have to imagine some of it. And remember, I can steal colors from anywhere just using the option key. And then I can always modify them using the color selector. The tail is catching a lot of light on the top. So that's the best indicator of my light source, which I can use running through it. And even though I'm using pretty wild colors, because it's at 70% opacity and I keep kind of working over the top of it, those colors will tend to get more and more kind of mixed together and desaturated. So be aware of that. And that's why it's good to go back to pure color as much as you can so that they don't get all muddy. Now the hardest thing for me, and I think for a lot of students too in digital painting, is forcing yourself to work on the, the areas that are less interesting. So for me that's the tail. I don't care that much about the tail. But if the tail is really unfinished and uninteresting looking, then it's going to distract from the other work I'm doing. Now one thing you have to do when you're doing your base painting layer is you have to get rid of all the whites. So that's my base painting layer so far without the sketch, right? But without the white background behind it, there's a lot of empty space in there. So I'm going to show you a technique where we can fill all that in. Now what if I want it to be filled in with white, right? This is what you can do. Make a duplicate of your background white layer. Even though it's locked, uh, the duplicate will unlock. And I'm going to say edit fill with middle gray, 50% gray at 100%. Okay, and then this shows me what I'm going to use for the next layers. And this is what I do. I go to my sketch layer. And on my sketch layer, I used white to erase so now I'm going to unlock my sketch layer and I'm going to erase with my lasso tool instead. So that, oh, that's too much. Oh, by the way, it's, it's pretty handy with our tablets that if you press the little button the button nearest the tip, it will change your tool to the hand tool so you can move around that way without having to hit the space bar to do it. But, and we can program those shortcuts, but it's good to know. All right, so once I have my sketch, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the empty space around the sketch. And unfortunately, well, no, this will work. So then I can take that and I'm going to invert that selection. So select inverse. And then I'm going to copy that, but I'm going to duplicate it out of the middle gray. So this stamp. So command J. And so now I have my sketch just filled in with 100% middle gray. And that's going to give me kind of a, a gray background where my sketch was that I can modify in the painting instead of the, the varied sketch lines. So it basically turns your, your sketch into paint. The other thing I want to do is take my base painting, select all of it with the magic wand, the empty space, then say select inverse. Oh, that's because I don't have contiguous on. Okay. I want to turn contiguous on for the magic wand. And then select the empty space and then say select inverse. And this is going to get all of those little white spaces inside. I'm going to fill those with middle gray. Or with white, I can, I can choose, right? So it's going to fill 
this whole shape with like a primer color. So I can first try it with white, Command J. I need to unlock it to do that. So it would look like this. And then I can say, okay, do I like how that painting is looking? Or do I want to fill it with gray instead? Which can often be a better choice. So I'm going to go to my base painting layer with contiguous turned on. I'm going to select with the magic wand the empty space. I am then going to say select inverse. And then move that selection down to my middle gray and then hit command J. So I have that. So on a white background, I'm going to lock my background layer again. Now I'm choosing. Do I want that? Or do I want this? As my base painting. And I think I'll turn them both on and then I'll scale, turn the gray background on lock these and then I'm going to scale this gray or the white on top of the gray the opacity down until it's the right tone for my base painting because I don't like to have solid white in my base painting I can always add that on top but I think I want to want it about there okay so let's lock all these layers I'm just going to finish up my base painting and then we can move on to refined painting. Now, do I want the sketch lines or do I want the gray for the sketch lines? And I think I'll have the sketch lines turned on right now, but I'm going to turn them down. There we go. So now. This is basically underneath my base painting. I have everything filled in. Okay, next, let's finish up the base painting. Now I can see that I need the white on the tail. Remember, if you want whites, you got to paint them. But it's good not to paint with just solid white. You want to find those tones. So that when you're refining it at the very end, like highlights in the eyes or something, you can always go to solid white if you need to, and it will really pop. Okay. I think I've got my base painting pretty filled in. Do a little more reflected light right there, and then a little bit of color in that shadow. But this is with a pretty large customized brush at 70% opacity. Oh, I need some highlight on this side as inspiration because I want my fox to be a little bit fluffier. And it's a lot easier to see that on the gray background than on the white background. So once I start finishing my base color painting, my first paint layer, I like to change that background color. Because when you paint on white, everything tends to look darker than it really is. And so painting on middle gray, it's like a toned canvas. It helps you see those value distinctions a little bit more clearly. And in the base painting, I'm not zooming in really at all. I'm trying to do everything from a distance. The ears are also probably the least finished, the least touched with the base painting. You can see my sketch coming through. I'm going to work on those a little. 